I'm John Deere. I'm with the Cokie Valley Sword Group, and today we're going to be talking about Seiza. Seiza, this kneeling position, is uh, ubiquitous among Japanese martial arts. So if you study them, there's a very good chance that you're going to have to end up in this position. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is mostly the uh, correct way of sitting in Seiza, or more precisely, things to avoid um, so that you don't look silly, and so that you don't send the sort of wrong cultural messages. So, for right now, uh, we're going to speak specifically about your knee and leg position. So, when uh, when people first start doing seiza, the tendency is to uh, sit kind of like this, like hugging your knees together often with your feet crossed, sort of one over the other. This is the kind of, I don't know how to sit in Seiza, so this is what I'm doing. Um, this is a perfectly acceptable way of sitting in Seiza if uh, you're female, right? This is traditionally how uh, a woman would sit in Seiza. Uh, for those of us that are male, this is uh, both weak and inappropriate. I mean, as you can see from just looking at me, I'm forming kind of this upward triangle. So I'm very typical from either side. Um, so students will usually progress from this, they're not really sure, that, to like, oh, I need to be wider, I need to have a stronger base. And they'll just be like, yes, I am in Cezanne. Right? Just, just sharing with the world. Uh, this is also uh, really quite rude. Uh, you, you don't want to sit this way. Also, it, it doesn't provide you a lot of stability front to back. So if some guy comes up and just works you, you're probably going to fall. What we want to do is find the happy medium, right? To where our knees are in line with our shoulders. And we form this kind of uh, box, right, in our form. We want to take our hands and rest them. Not out here, like you'll see a lot of Westerners doing, but in close. Take the inside of your wrist and thumb and brace it against the nook of your hip, right? Your fingertips come to the inside of the center line of your thigh. Bump. And rather than sticking your elbows out, you let them relax back. This is mostly <laughs> because you're probably sitting next to people. <laughs> and you don't want to be like the dude all spreading on the bus, right? Keep it compact, keep your form under control, and make it so that you can work uh, and work forward. Now, we are probably not going to get into uh, suwariwaza in this video series. Uh, suwariwaza is uh, basically combative movements from the, the seiza sort of height. Um, but the thing to understand is that with seiza, you can go forward or you can evade. Uh, but it's very difficult to move backwards. So, of course, there are people that are like, oh, I can move backwards. See, I just, I just moved backwards. Um, but that's uh, pretty unrealistic <laughs> when you put it into the context of some dude trying to stab you to death. Um, that about covers the, the kneeling foot position. Um, I guess I can mention uh, Tateheza real quick. Uh, because this, uh, because of the way you sit on your heels and on your feet, this seiza position is uh, fairly difficult to sit in while you're uh, in armor. Also, because you can only go forward, it has some you know, tactical implications. 
that uh, you want to use it at an appropriate time. So, there's another low to the ground sitting position called Tateheza, um, which is this. So, I am sitting on one heel rather than both. My left knee is in that same uh, shoulder orientation. My right foot, this is where it tends to vary from style to style. I've seen some that are uh, quite pulled in. I've seen some where your foot is flat on the ground and your knee is quite high. I've seen some where they really try and keep your foot flat but wrench this low. Um, and sort of every variation in there. Find something that's comfortable for you. Um, I like having my foot flat because, again, this is a position for uh, mostly when you're wearing armor. From here, I can move forward, and I can move back, and I can move uh, a little bit to either side. It's a nice, uh, strong position, um, but you don't see it a lot in uh, sort of modern styles. It's definitely outside of karate. Um, there are some of us, mostly koryu. Uh, but it's kind of cool. It's one of those, you know, unique cultural artifacts from obviously when people were still wearing armor. So, back to the main subject of seiza. Uh, for us, because we're typically doing seiza uh, with our weapons, either at the beginning or ending of class, where you place your sword becomes important. So, if I pull my sword out of my obi, I set down into seiza, and I set my sword on my left hand side with the edge facing out. So let's come back up a little bit here so you can see that it's got to make that help the orientation. Edges facing out. This is uh, basically a declaration of aggression. You would use this to communicate with the person that you're sitting across from that you're not fooling around. That not only uh, are you prepared uh, to commit violence in this interaction, but you're assuming that it's going to happen. Um, if the if that tone doesn't match the tone of your discussion, uh, obviously there's going to be some dissonance. Uh, slightly, slightly less aggressive. It's that same left hand position, but with the edge turned inward towards your body. The thought being here that I have to grab the sword and turn it outward to be able to draw it. Um, does this functionally make a difference? No, it, it's, it's largely symbolic uh, in terms of actual difficulty of employing your sword. From there, we move to what are considered more socially acceptable, especially in a dojo setting, positions for the sword. And that is having the sword on your right hand side. Why? Because most people, and all Japanese swordsmen, are right-handed uh, because left-handedness is not tolerated. Um, facing the edge to the outside, again, is considered slightly aggressive because you can still move into a left-handed cut. Um, so, typically, what is considered the most acceptable form when meeting somebody that you are uh, uh, at least trying to be diplomatic with is to have the edge inward on your right side. The idea being that either I've got to bring it up, turn, draw with my left, or that I have to transition uh, it to my left hand uh, to be able to draw. Now, there are instances, especially when, or there are historical instances, I don't know that this happens in any modern, or any school in modern times, where uh, you would place your sword edge towards you all the way uh, behind you as a way of 
showing sort of complete deference to the person that you're talking to. Like, not only do I have no intention of violence, I just need some place to put this thing so that we can have our, our discussion, uh, is the kind of feeling. Uh, you won't see this much in dojos because, again, you're stacked like eggs in a carton next to the dude next to you, and there's going to be a uh, weapon conflict, right? So, that is uh, about it for sword placement, for how to do Seiza, a little teaser of Tateheza, and um, I think that's about it, right? The main thing, if you're not a lady, don't, don't sit like one to topple. Um, and honestly, I think that if you're, uh, if you're a lady who's wearing hakama, then I feel like this, although maybe not culturally appropriate, is uh, martially appropriate for the same reason. To have that strong base and strong direction. However, uh, of course, uh, if you're wearing kimono, um, only, you know, modesty. And uh, the same thing, guys, right? Don't go with your kimono flapping open. That's rude. <laughs> um, as always, if you want to understand this work, you have to pick up sword and go train. It occurred to me that uh, perhaps uh, you all would like to know how to actually get down into this position um, in case your instructor either does not mention it or their style doesn't have a method. Um, so I'll give you uh, the way I do it and sort of why I do it this way. And we'll do this from the side so it makes a little bit more sense. Right? Camera's focused on the feet. So what I like to do is I don't like stepping anywhere that I can't uh, see, that I don't have control over the space. So if I'm going to go into Seiza, I'll be at the back end of it. I'll step my right foot up. This is going to sort of set my box. I'll come down and immediately release my ankle. You want to avoid keeping your ankle high uh, in Seiza or really in anything because it's very easy for an opponent to apply pressure uh, crosswise across to your heel and uh, break your knee. So come down and immediately protect it. Now I'll bring my right foot to the knees back. Right. So I'm kind of in a close position. I will settle down onto my heels and then I'll relax my knees open again to that square orientation so make sure my hands are settled. If you notice, my hands sort of stay in this position the entire time, I'm not reaching around or doing anything. This is mostly because uh, if I'm moving with my sword, then I'll have taken the sword off, and I'll still hold it in this close to my body position, and from there, either transfer it to my right side, or set it down, which is what I usually do, on my left side. In this case, the hand is staying close to control the weapon, so I'm not flapping it around, knocking it into people. Uh, if I don't have a long sword, and I'm going into Seiza, I still have my Shoto, whether it's a uh, Tonto or Wakazashi, right? And I want my hands close to that because anytime you're in the middle of a transition, you're vulnerable because you've made a committed action to some direction and your mind's kind of in this process loop. And so any interruption to that creates time for the opponent to work. Uh, so having your, your shoto or whatever here as you go right allows you to draw the tool and work um, easily 
Make sense? It should. It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, controlled, concise, calm. Try not to be overly rigid and wobbly. Relax your body down, right? Get used to these motions. So that uh, you're comfortable with the position here, you and you really start to understand. Like, okay, you know, I'm I'm, I'm set. And, nah, hope that makes sense.